the aftermath of Actman's channel. Now, I feel like YouTube has been farming else. Like, it's just been farming else. So we'll see what's going to happen. Here we go. It's recording July 27th. Cannot be sure my channel will remain in good health after uploading this. However, I rebel against the notion that I must live in constant fear of what I say and do on this platform. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're gonna, do, if you're constantly worried, what the fuck is the point of making videos? You can't express yourself. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and this is like the fifth or sixth time I've tried writing slash recording this video. Yeah, I'd be pissed a video too. talking about my channel's demonetization, the aftermath of that, and everything that has happened. Yeah. Every time I've sat down to write or record a video about it, I get to the point where I'm like, I don't know if this is safe for me to say. I don't know if this will negatively impact my channel in the future or if further action will be taken against me. However, I don't want to live my life as a content creator in constant fear of what I'm allowed and not allowed to do. So this is the video. This is it. Welcome. Here we go. Greetings. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm the Act Man. My channel Hi. was demonetized uh, over a month ago. Quite a sticky situation that was. Now, first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who voiced their support for me, who disagreed with this decision and voiced their disagreement yeah. uh, responsibly. People that complained ethically you know what i mean that didn't resort to personal attacks or anything like that yeah I, I would say so i mean a lot pretty much everybody was on his side uh, i didn't see anybody i i'm like you know like dj wheat was like like he was mad that act man said what he said about like, the youtube employees and i will even say like that was bad he shouldn't have said that he knows he shouldn't have said that dj wheat was right in that regard and okay that that's fine like, you can say, like, that was definitely, like, a bad decision. But other than that, I feel like everybody was completely on his side. Uh, I had such a massive got, yeah. amount of support. Yeah, from it got Ethan and Keemstar to agree on something. I mean, I think that just alone deserves a fucking attention from YouTube right there. Um, fellow content creators, a bunch of people I'd always looked up to, talked about the issue. It's far too many to name. And, and even more creators oh, yeah. learned about me because of this and a lot of people were on my side and i appreciate that and i also want to say that yep. i'm grateful to youtube for reversing their decision to demonetize my channel i feel that what separates men from boys is not the mistakes you make but how you handle them yeah. i think it's much easier to try and pretend like you didn't make a mistake and try to save face than it is to face the music and admit the Maybe something like I, I'm I, the thing is like in my mind, like I view it as like two different things. Like, yeah, act man messed up with like saying what he said about the YouTube employees, even though it was obviously a joke. Um, you know, like they literally had somebody go to the office and try to shoot people there. So like I can get why they would be super fucking careful about that. Uh, I think anybody would would think the exact same thing. And I would assume that they probably have some degree of rec uh, of like accountability like legal accountability that they have to take action against people that say something like that because if they don't if anything happens in the future and they get sued they can use them youtube google not taking action against it as evidence of uh not, not malicious intent uh, as evidence of negligence so like they kind of have to do this and so i think it was fine if they demonetized them for a month or something like that because of that totally fucking fine but i think that problem exists independently of quantum tv you see what i'm saying like act man doing that bad doesn't change anything about quantum tv happened that shouldn't have happened that requires strength yeah. and confidence and a willingness to be better so my channel was demonetized the first question why? The reason I was given is because of tweets I made threatening to dox and harass the family members of YouTube employees and other content creators. In other news, there seems to be a virus spreading that makes people look at everything 100% literally. The tweets, the tweets I made were satirical. They were clearly satirical, meant to it's be a joke, a joke about a situation. Like, there's no debate. It, I made it painfully obvious for you and everyone so that something like this wouldn't happen.
But yeah, there's yeah, I mean, I, th I think obviously it was a joke. Any reasonable person knows that it was a joke. YouTube probably still has to take action on it because of some sort of probable legal uh, legal requirements or something like that. I think that that's that's really the truth. They probably have to legally take action about it. It's like I was talking about. Remember the Narcissa Wright thing where she got banned and then unbanned and then rebanned. I think the reban was because of the legal fucking department saying like, listen, we don't want to have this as evidence in the next negligence case that we have in five years. So you've got to keep this person banned. And I think the same thing happened with Actman. It's understandable. But of course, it is also completely disconnected from reality. It's an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate truth. The small population of people who like genuinely think I planned on making a video series called yeah. Doxing Adventures with Actman. I hope it comes as no surprise to those people with functioning prefrontal cortexes, but I never had any intention to make such a series. Oh, okay. oh never mind. What? Shocking, I know. So oh, okay. what was the point of those tweets? What was the joke? Well, the joke was, here's an instance of a content creator that has openly admitted to harassing the family members of a content creator and posting that content on his YouTube channel and yeah. making money off of it. This has been brought to YouTube's attention, and they have decided that this action does not violate any of the community guidelines, and therefore no action will be taken against it. This is an undisputed fact. That was YouTube's decision. And so well, I don't know how this happens. Like, I, I really think that, like, all this drama, like, it, it's like the same thing, like, with Corey. And, and this is, like, this is, Act Man's situation is, like, one of the big reasons why... I want to look a little bit more under the surface with like people saying like YouTube's racist. It's like, well, what what is it really, right? Because Actman's white, Quantum was black. So like either there's two different kinds of racists that work at YouTube or there's something else going on here that's a lot bigger. And I think that it's just crazy that it 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 is still astonishing that the Quantum TV thing went down like it did. It is so crazy that happened. I was I making fun it. of the fact that here's a guy who's openly admitting to harassing someone else's family and YouTube has seen it and they say, that's okay. So it's like, okay, what would be the most absurd type of content to produce around harassing people's families since apparently it is okay, okay now? Yeah. Well, doxing and harassing YouTube employees' families and other f content creators' families. Little did I it's realize yeah, the satire would become reality when YouTube decided that joking about doxing is far more serious than actual doxing. I brought to YouTube's attention the fact that this creator had posted the phone numbers of other creators on his community page, and I gave them screenshots. <laughs> How does this happen? That's nuts. How does this fucking happen? Like, can we trade Gideon for Quantum? Can we just do like a fucking Full Metal Alchemist equivalent exchange? Let's get rid of him and have somebody who actually makes content on the platform again. Please? This is insane. Shots, I provided them with the person who was doxxed, who could testify on their own behalf about it, and I have heard nothing back on that matter. I now, some people why. have said, well, Actman, what this, what this other content creator did to your family wasn't doxing, and I guess by a literal definition, you are correct. However, I labeled it doxing because it just seemed like the simplest explanation, like looking up someone's mom's address and phone number and contacting them and saying, hey, Make your 27-year-old son stop harassing me. It's like... Your son is causing trouble for me, and that's the whole reason for this call to begin with. You know, and then encouraging your audience to look up that same information. I promise you, if you look into the Act Man right now, you will find his full legal name. You will find... Just type Act Man. You, and look for Act Man's real name. Like, actually try to find people, you will find it. It's not hard. Like, is that... How is it possible that all of this shit happened and that guy is just completely okay.
Oh, what's this here? If you are pushing a racist agenda, wouldn't you keep the crazy black guy on your platform to get rid of the others so people only see the crazy black guy and not the others? Oh, to like kind of like say like, oh, well, the, for, for like the plausible deniability. So it's like fucking like three different layers of like grand wizards that are sitting there trying to plan out how to how to do this. I don't know. Yeah, it's just nuts, man. Stretching, really reaching. <laughs> if I were like Nazi shit, yeah. It's just, and, and, and that's the thing, right? It's like everybody starts writing their own fan fiction about this stuff because the reality just doesn't make any sense. And people have like this fucking, th th they have to make sense out of the world and they just can't do it with this situation. They're like, I, I don't understand. How is this even possible? not doxing to say hey here here's how you can look up this guy's address yeah. and phone number and do the same thing i did it's not hard i feel like that's doxing but maybe it's incitement to dox which is still terrible the point is my family was harassed by another content creator who openly admitted to harassing my family members and inciting his fans to do the same this yes. was brought to youtube's attention he posted the evidence yes. himself and YouTube decided that this was not against the community guidelines. So now the question that we all have to ask and we all deserve an answer to, is it okay to harass the family members of other content creators? I don't think that's an unreasonable question to ask. So my channel was of officially demonetized because yeah. of these tweets. There's quite a few problems with this. Uh, the first being that they were only up for four hours and I was kindly and respectfully asked if I would delete them through my partner manager at YouTube. The tweets were up for four hours, man. Yeah. And at the first- I, I, As I said before, I, I can respect their decision to demonetize him under the grounds of legal culpability, culpability right? Like, they are probably legally obligated to take action against something like that in order to make themselves less liable for any sort of negligence uh, case in the future. You see what I'm saying? Like, I think that's, that's why. What about Quantum? Quantum's not an employee, so they're not bound by the same obligation. Do you understand? So, like, if Quantum gets harassed or something bad happens to him, YouTube doesn't give a fuck. Why do they care? That's what the difference is. First opportunity, when YouTube asked me if I could I delete them, I did. Yeah. That was a gesture of good faith. Yeah, yes. I don't want anybody there to feel like they're actually under threat of being doxxed yes, or right. their families. A simple five minute conversation could have cleared this up instantly without the need. Yeah, I, I think so too, absolutely. Uh, somebody says that seems like a big assumption. Do you, all right, so for you guys, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm on point with this? That YouTube probably did this because of a legal requirement to limit liability in the future? Like, I, I feel like I'm 100% on point with this. I have no idea. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, that would, that would absolutely make sense. Uh, I can't see why else they would do it. Well, they probably got pissed off. I mean, they could just get pissed off, sure. But I think that, that that's a huge, huge good reason. Yeah, maybe that and to set a precedent. They don't give a fuck about employees or content creators. Um... Uh, I feel like the company only moves because of legal consequences. Well, that that's that's exactly it. Yeah, I think so. I think they're just ignorant with a lot of their decisions. I think that they are, but I think in decisions that could put the company at financial legal risk, they are not ignorant of those situations. Absolutely not. And the reason why they didn't act on Actman's behalf or Quantum's behalf is because those people are not employees and they're not required to like Google and YouTube are not responsible for their well-being in the same way that they are for an employee because they are independent contractors. 
need for such drastic action. You know how easy it would have been? Hey, Act Man, <laughs> I work at YouTube. I'm just wondering, do you actually intend on making the video series Doxing Adventures with Act Man? To which I would have responded, No. Here's a definition of satire. Yeah, exactly. And somebody said in chat, uh, why then demonetize and not suspend them? Like, why not have an even harsher punishment? Because I think that all they needed to do was show that they took action. I think that they knew it was a joke, but they had to take action. So they went with something that was less, uh, uh, less, less intense. They're like, we have to do something about this, but we know you're fucking around. So we're just going to do this because you know, we have to do something. That's probably why. Because I don't know if there's some kind of language barrier. If people, if certain people at YouTube don't understand what satire is, or maybe yeah. they're from a different country and don't understand the concept, I don't. I don't know how the joke went over so many people's heads to where the the mm -hmm. it, the gut reaction was demonetize his whole channel, let's take his livelihood away from him. Satire, if you're curious, is like over exaggerated yeah. commentary. It's jokes made to illustrate a point. Uh, you can check out South yeah, Park sure. if you're interested in satire. Political satire is a thing. I highly encourage anybody. I mean, I would say, like, for example, if that, like, I mean, I, I think a good parallel, if you want to use the political satire, was, uh, was it Kathy Griffin who had, like, the decapitated head of Donald Trump and she still got canned for that? Even though she was like, oh, that's satire. I don't really mean that. So I, I think that there actually are a lot of other examples where... Like, something being satire is not necessarily a complete immunity card, but I think it also should be taken into consideration in common sense. Yeah, you don't make bomb jokes at the airport. Um, it, it's that kind of stuff. Uh, you shouldn't do satire. It's basically sarcasm. People take literally. I think that it's not that big of a deal. As I said before, I think that YouTube, in terms of the act man getting demonetized and all that, it is completely understandable. It is, it, it's kind of dumb, but given all the circumstances at play, I think that it's pretty much fair. Uh, that, that's what I would say. Yeah, you can't, oh, you sat, sat hard. yeah, it became okay to joke around with that thing. So it became, yeah, it's like, it becomes hard to regulate if you can just like, yeah. It's like, for example, like there's a lot of things that I can't joke around with, even if it's satire on stream, right? With like killing somebody with like certain times of like extreme opinions or a anything like that. So there's a lot of a lot of things that are even because it's satire you, you you can't do that. So that's what I would say. I don't think satire is a place in a serious conversation. I, I do. I, I, I do. I, I don't think satire is fundamentally bad. I like satire. Be confused on the matter of satire to look up definitions and do as much research as humanly possible. Especially if those people work at YouTube and have to make decisions on demonetizing a channel based on legitimate threats and if they have to differentiate between legitimate threats and fucking satire. Yeah. So here's what I don't get. If the tweets were a problem, why was action taken against me after the threat was neutralized? I laid down whatever fake weapons I was carrying, and I said, I'm not a threat to you. I don't mean this. Yeah. And then two days later, the channel's demonetized anyways. Talking to the legal it's team. It's pretty shitty, right? Talking now, to the I fucking legal team. Now, I understand that a ship that's as was. large and massive as YouTube, it takes some time to steer, right? There's thousands, if not tens of thousands of people working for essentially the second biggest website in the world. But it just sucks that, like, it, it takes two days to make a terrible decision that could potentially destroy someone's life and it takes over a month to find out how to reverse that decision. Let's be clear. The first Well, I remember one time I don't even know if I should say this, I'm just going to say it. So, one time I'm working late at the IRS and it's like 2:30 in the morning. Jeff texts me. He's like, bro, do you want to go to Taco Cabana? And I'm like, man, I got to work for two more hours because I would work from 4.30 in, in the afternoon to 4.30 at night uh, if, I, if, it was, if I could get that overtime hours. And um, so he's like, oh, shit, bro, you could be there for two more hours? He's like, I don't want to wait that long. 
can I just call a bomb threat in and that way you can leave? And I was like sitting in my chair thinking to myself, you fucking idiot. What are you saying? Stop it. Like, like I'm like, no, no, no. Don't fucking say that, right? And I'm like, are you insane? Holy fucking shit. Right, I'm like, am I going to get fired? Is Jeff getting in trouble? Like, is the FBI going to show up my house? Like, what's going to happen, right? Just like 10 years ago. Nothing came of it, right? Obviously. But I'm going to say, like, that was 10 years ago. Talk about taking a joke. Yeah, he said that over the phone. He texted it. Ah. An only <laughs> community guidelines I mean, strike. I have and, and again, Jeff was kidding. He's obviously 100% kidding. But I bet, you know, Officer Smith and Officer James that show up at the house, maybe they don't think it's as funny as Jeff did. They don't think it was quite as funny as Jeff thought that shit was funny. Ever gotten was over five years ago in the feminists and SJWs versus oh video games video. Now, if I had a chance, I'd go back and I'd rewrite certain parts of it. I'd say things a little bit mm -hmm. differently. But overall, like the video doesn't violate community guidelines. Yeah, sure. And at one point it was hit with a strike, at which point I reached out to a trusted flagger who got the strike removed and the video reinstated. So I, I've been a clean boy. I shower Good every boy. day, unlike most gamers. Please don't ostracize me for personal hygiene. I'm still one of you. So I given did my history today, of it's that, not it's being that a day problem, of the week. again, it's all the more puzzling why the most extreme action was taken against me. I mean, besides just outright deleting my channel, demonetizing it is the second most extreme action you could have taken. I, I think it's probably the third. Uh, you know, because you have, like, obviously, the deleting the channel is number two. Number three is calling the FBI or the authorities, right? So it, it's number three in, in my in my eyes. I, I think that it was probably the least they could have done in a legal circumstance to remove liability. Still don't understand it. This is the thing. What scares me I take is I case, still don't know the... So, so okay. All right. You, you don't understand why did they take issue on this case, but not Quantum's case. Because YouTube can't get sued if anything bad happens to Quantum. See, YouTube can't lose money if Quantum does something bad, but YouTube can lose money if they get sued. YouTube doesn't care about Quantum and they don't care about Actman, but they do care about their own employees and they don't really care about them in probably a lot of cases. They only care about them in the context of those employees suing the company. That's it. So that's why it all that that see the thing is it makes all of it. I think if you look at it through that lens, everything makes sense. That's it. Exact reason why my channel was demonetized or the dark age of YouTube video was taken down and given a strike. I still have no idea. I can only speculate, okay? When you report a video on YouTube, you include a timestamp for YouTube to look over. Yeah. Naturally, I assume that makes their job a bit easier as they don't have to track down whatever part uh, the user thinks violates the community guidelines. So when users report a video to YouTube, they include a timestamp. Yeah. YouTube does not extend that same courtesy to its users. The dark age of YouTube is over 50 minutes long and it was removed for unwanted sexualization. Okay, fair enough. Where did that occur? What part of the video did that occur? I got no clue. They didn't tell me that at all. I can only assume it was the, the poorly photoshopped cucumber floating near Mr. TV's mouth. That was considered unwanted sexualization. Yeah. But when I looked up unwanted sexualization and, and, and researched it, it sounds like it's it's threats of rape. Like really extreme stuff. Unwanted sexualization does not... I think that is it fair for... So this is usually what I look at in terms of a barometer. Is it fair for YouTube to... like? I don't see why they don't just make him take that part out of the video. Like, that seems like a smarter and cleaner way to solve the problem. Because it's like, 
it, it's like you can look at things, you have to look at things in black and white sometimes whenever you apply rules, but the way that you apply the rules doesn't always have to be in black and white. Does that make sense? So, like, I can see how, for example, if there was, like, a random girl and a guy kept photoshopping cucumbers into her mouth or other women's mouths and doing different types of Photoshop things that simulate a sex act, would this be something that YouTube should moderate? And I think the answer to that is probably yes. What do you guys think? Do you guys, I mean, I, I think that's pretty fair. If it makes people uncomfortable and they don't like it. So then what's the difference between that and quantum? Well, quantum's a man, you know, it's a gay thing. It's like a joke or whatever. Yes, all of these things do matter, but ultimately it is kind of the same thing. And it is in a lot of ways, a reverse the rules situation unironically. Is that why is it okay to do that to quantum, but it's not okay to do that to uh, some other female content creator? I can see that, yes. A and again, I think that it's kind of ridiculous because it seems like it obviously wasn't a big deal. And why is Quantum Gang so upset about that? Doesn't that kind of like lend some credibility to the fact that he might be homophobic based off of all the other comments that he's made and he was so intent on making sure that this was removed? What exactly is going on here? I, I do think that there's a lot more to it. However, I, I'm just saying that these are the reasons why I think these types of things would have happened, right? It's more of a question of how they could moderate it. Yes, I think that the way it was moderated was bad. They could have just told them, change the thumbnail, change this part in the video, remove this part in the video. Uh, you know, d we're going to demonetize this video, something like that. Yeah, it's all context, man. Yeah, exactly. Context a joke about homophobia? Yeah, yeah, they're making fun of him for being homophobic. And it's like, again, if, if YouTube wants to act on that, okay, fine, totally okay. However, I think that it was a disproportionate reaction, given the context. Not equate to a cucumber floating near someone's mouth. To me, it seems like, and I can't say this for certain, but it seems like someone at YouTube was really, 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 really pissed off at whatever I did. They they either took the jokes seriously or intentionally yeah. misinterpreted them and gave no quarter. There was no no like, hey, are you serious? There was no conversation had. It was yeah. just, nope, you're gone. Maybe you'll come back. Who knows? And can you imagine the paranoia that creates? It's like those those first few weeks, dude fucking sucked my entire concept of life and reality was just flipped upside down yeah no doubt i didn't know if i was going to get my channel back i didn't know if i was going to keep making youtube videos the thing i've been passionately doing and putting so much love and effort into over the past six years i didn't know if that was all just taken away from me in the snap of a finger th yeah. just thanos out of existence because of a satirical joke tweet i deleted four hours after it was posted because people who made this decision asked me to yeah yeah and i think that's definitely fucking true uh it's like imagine the youtube make personal phone calls to creators well you realize that like all like you realize like throughout this entire video we've been watching us 12 minutes into the video he's mentioned multiple times of personal phone calls he's had with youtube right i think the problem is internal the problem is that the content creator like the People that are are the, the liaisons between YouTube Central and the content creators, those people, are, there's, a, there's a disconnect between them and the decision makers. Do you see what I'm saying? Again, I know that YouTube makes mistakes. They're not always perfect. Yeah. I love this place. I want to see it be the best place it can be. I want people to have the same opportunities that I had. Yeah, and that is the reason yeah. why I started taking action against the content creator. Mm -hmm. Because I felt like this creator was trying to rob others of those opportunities. This creator had a history yeah. of terrible interactions with every other creator he came across i heard their testimonies i got their evidence i asked people this is a person that really shouldn't be on the platform this is a person who my family was not the first family they had harassed okay yeah 
This had happened likely won't be the, the last. My video was not the first that he attempted to falsely copyright strike and take down, which is against the law. And I saw this person as a threat to the YouTube brand and a threat to the YouTube ecosystem. Oh, I listened to YouTube's words. The, the only solace that you can have in this is that a person who's that unhinged will fly off the handle again, and then in the next time, eventually they will get got. Even if they didn't get got this time, they will eventually get got because people like this never know when to quit. They'll always keep doing it over and over and over on their policies, on making the platform a better place, and I genuinely believed in them. I yeah. believed in the creator response. I actually did too. And if you go back and you watch my original videos about this, I was pretty confident that YouTube, I was actually not confident, I was absolutely confident that YouTube would have completely removed this. Like, I, I feel like YouTube would have, at, like this is just a matter of time, it is so cut and dried, like it's so obvious. Like, of course, YouTube's going to do this. Ability initiative. And I don't know if I ever should again. I don't know if I should yeah. ever stick up for another content creator that is getting false DMCA strikes. Because I don't know what that's going to do to my channel. And for the longest yeah. time, I felt like trapped because I couldn't focus on real videos. And I realize I'm just ranting. This whole video is just going to be a rant because it's better to be unscripted and just be yeah. natural. But like, I would sit at the computer, I would look at the script, and I would look at my editing software, and I would just think, I want to do anything else. I'd rather be doing anything else right now than editing a video when I don't know if my future is certain. Yeah. And it's crazy. This crazy for a channel. I think you, it's like, just so you know, like you make plenty of money doing other stuff online. You don't have to just do YouTube videos. And also you can make money with YouTube videos in a lot of other ways. Uh, there's always a way. And, um, you know, like a lot of times uh, I got by, I did well. And uh, I, I was able to pay for shit that I wanted and do things that I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't start working until the, for the IRS until I was like 22, 23, something like that. All the time before that, I didn't have a job, but I still got paid. There's a lot of ways that you can make money. It doesn't just have to be one thing. With 1.5 million subscribers, with not a single community guidelines or copyright strike to their name, yeah. to, to suddenly find themselves in a position where they're questioning their entire future, their livelihood, their career, the last seven years mm -hmm. of their life dedicated to this job. You understand how that feels? Do you understand why I had this breakdown on Twitter? Why I was so, like, I got COVID. It was my birthday. Yeah, my I think that it's a big thing. Like, and this is, again, like, what the big problem is whenever you have a system and the rules aren't enforced fairly. Like, I think that there's nothing worse than whenever things are not done fairly. And obviously, equal treatment is not always fair treatment. However, I think that the rules should be enforced and you either have the rules or you don't have the rules. And if you're not going to enforce the rules, there should be a damn good fucking reason for it. And they didn't have anything like that. They all got demonetized the day before my birthday. It was the worst that birthday sucks. I ever had. And that's not a pity party, man. I, d like, I, could, yeah, I, I didn't that. feel like a birthday. I couldn't even focus. But what hurt more was feeling like I was silenced that I couldn't yeah. talk about this for fear of what might happen or what might not happen. I'll tell oh. you guys something. I talk about whatever the fuck I want. Like, that's a fact. And people don't like that. But I do it. I just say, I, I say whatever the fuck I want to say. And I give my opinion about stuff. And I never worry about getting silenced or anything like that. I have, in my mind at least, right, and so far I've been right, I have a pretty good barometer of where the line is. And, like, not to push the line or make a joke about, you know, doxing somebody or killing somebody or something like that. And I think I've done a pretty good job over the years. So I wouldn't worry about getting silenced. I think that it's more about... It's really about being able to think beyond yourself, like, you have to be able to think beyond what happens to you, and you have to be able to think about how the other person is going to interpret what's happening and how they will react to it. And if you can do that successfully, you can pretty much say whatever you want.
Yeah, I mean that that that's what I generally think. Uh, platforms don't want Asgold to start popping. They want independent, strong, fearless people. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean the thing is, I think that a lot of people can say whatever they want. They just can't say it in certain ways, or they can't express certain things. I don't know. I, I I've never had a problem speaking my mind about something, as long as I was not encouraging harassment of another person. I've never had that happen. Well, maybe Actman is criticizing YouTube a little yeah. too much. Maybe this is a person we don't want on the platform. Do I speak out against injustice and risk my livelihood, or do yeah. I keep my trap shut and hate myself for not speaking about it? It's a you should always just talk about it. Just always talk about it and always say something about it. And if you go down, at least you went down swinging. You're able to do what you have to do. What's the point of having your own fucking YouTube channel, building yourself up to this point just to be a fucking slave and a cuck to some fucking TOS that was written by a nerd in California? Fuck that. Fuck that. You say what it is. Most of the time, the TOS is right. I agree with the TOS in like 99.9% .9 of circumstances. But I'll be honest, Actman's circumstance is the 0.1%. It is the bullshit percent. It's that one time that it was absolutely, completely, unequivocally, undisputedly, and unfairly mismanaged. Position to be in. I just hope people at YouTube understand that I'm a real person. That, like, I put my heart, blood, and soul in my gamer juice into making do. videos. And this was the first time I genuinely was like, you know what? I feel like this person is a real detriment to the platform, and I'm going to do what I can to prove that. And I thought I did. I think I proved it to a majority of people. This is a person that genuinely believes the world would be better off without gay people. And I feel like that, that type of hate speech, it goes too far. Consistently wishing death on other people, it goes too far. I'm just trying to get everyone to understand my mindset in all of That's this. And it's like, there's a lot of questions I have. I would like to know what time... Yeah, it's, it's a bit much to, to say that kind of stuff. It's like one thing, it's like there's like a big spectrum of people that are not completely like super positive towards LGBT. There is a massive spectrum of gray. But at the very end of that spectrum is wishing that they, that they get killed in a shooting. You see what I'm saying? That is at like the very fucking end. Timestamps of the video violated the guidelines. I'd like to go back and fix them. It's an hour long video. Yeah. At least give me that opportunity. Because here's, here's the most important thing. Uh, I don't know what lesson I was supposed to have learned from this. Generally speaking, yeah. when you get punished by your workplace or your parents, it's because you're meant to learn a lesson about something and about your behavior. I got no idea what the lesson was. Was the lesson? Well, I think it's obviously like don't you, you just we, we just can't joke around and at all in any capacity about like threats on the employees. Just like no cap, no capping. There's a no cap and guideline. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you thought that it was okay. Uh-uh, nope. You can't do it. That's the only thing. I feel like that's the only thing that, that he learned. That, that's it. And also that YouTube doesn't enforce their TOS. That, you know, don't make a video and have a cucumber be within five meters of your mouth. Was that the lesson? Was the lesson don't make satirical tweets about terrible things that happened yeah, to you? Yeah, that's obvious. I want to was. know the lesson, YouTube, that you wanted me to take away from all of this. And I just, like, I want to work with you guys to help make the platform better. I see a lot of areas for improvement. That doesn't mean I, I will ever stop posting videos or that I hate you. I think it it's can just be that, like, too. Yeah. you say you want to protect smaller creators and. You want to empower people, and everyone has a voice. I don't want to doubt that. Yep. I don't want to doubt your words. I believe those words.
And I hope you- He's right though, he could have just told him this. Yeah, they could have just messed with him, be like, listen bro, like, I know you didn't mean it, but like, we have a zero tolerance pol- Like, YouTube would have lost nothing if they said that, hey, we have a zero tolerance policy on this, we're gonna, uh, unmonetize you for now, we'll reevaluate it later on, but for now, we have to take action. Uh, it, this is not an option for us, we just have to take action. And I think that if they had told Actman that, Actman would probably be like, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, sure. All right, that's fine. He would understand that. Genuinely do too. Using copyright strikes to silence criticism, too to much? attack no, users, so, and to take down legally fair use videos is terrible. And it's something that YouTube should do something about because the only alternative is legal action, which is most of the times, flat out, not worth the time, patience. Uh, I don't like, no need for violence, Monkey Pox doing his best. Uh, we got Quantum Alt Account in here. Let me ban him. ...money and energy for your standard content creator. Here. So, I'm making this video because Weirdo. I knew I had to talk about it at some point. I felt like I've gathered my thoughts. I hope if anybody at YouTube is watching this, I hope you've watched through to the end. Realize that I'm a real person, man. I didn't mean nothing by those tweets. It was simply satire. And to understand how impactful that video getting removed was, it's like that was that was a month and a half's worth of research and two weeks of editing where I was working on it like eight hours a day. Sometimes I worked 16 hours a day, 20 hours a day on that video, didn't sleep. That video... Yeah, it's like an obsession. I mean, I could see how that happens. Like, have you guys ever had something like bad happen to you? Or like something where you just get like super fucking obsessed with it and you can't, you, you can't like not do it or, or handle that? No big company is going to be 100% upfront, 100% upfront. Well, the thing is like, they don't have to be 100% upfront. All they have to do is say like, hey, listen, we knew it was a joke. We have a zero tolerance policy though. We can't even tolerate jokes. I hope you understand. I think that, like, I think that would be fair. I really, I really don't think that they, they have to be above that. And it's like, a lot of times, there are times that a company doesn't have to do something. Or like, let's say your boss doesn't have to do something. But everything just goes a lot more smooth if people are respectful and open with each other. They just communicate on a respectful and open way and there's no problems you see what i'm saying like there's no there's no need for this yes you don't have to just because you don't have to do something doesn't mean that things won't go a lot more easily if you do it's like people just like they it's like they're flexing power it's like what do you mean like what, what's wrong with you it's weird is my magnum opus it is the best it edited lot, written yeah. video I've ever produced. I agree. It was also my best performing video of all time, gathering 1.4 million mm. views in like four or five days. That's pretty That's good. Crazy. That's pretty good for me. And so to see that momentum, to see that video, Makes all that effort and time, to see it just abruptly cut short. And not only that, but my entire revenue stream cut short because of that yeah. for reasons that have never been fully explained to me yeah that has the potential to cause a mental breakdown i'm not a threat to the youtube oh i think it does i think it would affect a lot of people very negatively on a mental level uh, i've had things like that happen to me too um like i didn't really get too stressed out about uh like every at the end of every single stream that i did in 2016 the first thing that I did at the end of my stream, before I even jerked off, is I checked my email to see if I got a ban notification. Every fucking stream. And if you watch those streams, you would know that's not all just paranoia. But that's a fact, man. I did that every fucking day. Brand, in truth, I am one of your greatest allies. I just hope that yeah. I don't believe in what makes YouTube great more than YouTube does. I feel like YouTube should have realized they made the wrong mistake when Keemstar and Ethan Klein mm -hmm. both agreed for the <laughs> first time in their lives. Yeah. Those two agreed on something. There it is. That this 
was unwarranted. My channel getting demonetized... Oh, sorry. ...was seen by everyone as completely yeah. unnecessary. I hope what happens to me never happens to anybody else. I don't think people should live in fear or feel paranoid about criticizing YouTube because of what might happen to their career. I don't want other creators to feel like their families might be hit in the crossfire because YouTube won't pursue action against people that harass them. I don't want to feel like that. I don't want YouTube to be a place like that, and I will always stick up for what I think is in YouTube's best interest. Yeah, you should just keep doing that, and if you get demonetized or whatever, just stream on Twitch or do some other shit, do Patreon or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of other ways. You can't just let people like that control you. You do that, you're just going to end up hating your life because you're not living, you're just surviving. And mine as well. Like I said, you can't live a life I'm not your enemy. Yourself. I'm one of your biggest supporters. I think that's fair. Yeah, I, th I think that whole video was pretty fucking fair, man. Uh, Ain't company takes action against employees saying the things about them. I treat YouTube like an honest, well-minded company. Well, I think that there's a lot of people that don't really understand the nuance between what YouTube can do and what YouTube should do. So we're no nobody's saying that YouTube is not allowed to do what they did. Like, obviously, they're allowed to do what they did. They did it. We're just disagreeing about doing it. We're saying this is a bad decision to make. You shouldn't have done this, even though you did do it. I don't know. I think that's pretty simple. What's the solution for you? If I was YouTube, what would I have done? I would have completely banned Quantum TV. I would have banned him entirely and... Any new account that he made or anything like that, I would instantly ban him, even if he had no strikes at all on the new account. And, like, maybe he could reappeal that ban uh, throughout the, uh, you know, after, you know, a, a year or two years of, like, reform, right? I mean, sure, give somebody a second chance after a while, but not for a very, very long time. And why he did threaten to dox YouTube employees? Because Quantum TV doing bad things exists independently from Ackman doing uh, a bad thing. So, like, there's an example. Like, if two people get in a fight, they can both be charged with assault. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not just that simple. And so, like, I, I think that the... Quant and also, like, if I was YouTube, I probably would have even... I, I would have had... To, I would have probably told him to remove the tweets and... If, if a legal team had told me, like if I was at YouTube and I had my legal team at YouTube tell me, you have to remove that tweet because it could make us liable for future lawsuits of negligence if something bad happens to employees. If they told me that, I would have demonetized this channel. I would have done that. I think anybody in that position would have done that. I think Actman would have done that. And I think that if he hears my reasoning for it, he'll probably agree with me. To be honest with you, I, I think so. But Actman doing that is completely independent from the Quantum TV situation. Uh, YouTube made a rule, no satire uh, that he did, period, in the story. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. Right? And Quantum Ban, uh, Actman took a bunch of evidence to prove it. If anything else, he just did extra one. Yeah, I think so too, for sure. And... Um, uh, poor Gaido, trying to make an honest content. Actman's a legend. I love Actman. I think Actman's great. I brought him on my stream to talk about this whole situation. We covered the whole thing from start to finish. And unfortunately, this seems like probably the last chapter until Quantum TV pops off again. I'm probably another gay person. Uh, I think that with a person like that, it's only a matter of time. I'm going to link you guys to video. Actman deserves a lot of support. I think he makes great content, and uh, I 100% support him. So make sure to give, a, give him a like, give him a sub, or anything like that. Yeah, he makes great videos. Like, we've watched, you guys might not know this, but we've watched Ackman's videos for years now. All right? I mean, like, it, it's been a long, long fucking time. And uh, well, let's see here. Um, if YouTube took over, what people then see business laws, being government and the Constitution? Well, I, I think, like, really, I mean, you've got to keep in mind, because I, I know that somebody might say this, like, oh, I thought you said that people should only get banned if they break the law on the platform. And to that, I would say, um,. I'm pretty sure filing a false copyright strike through the platform system is breaking the fucking law. 
Like, that that's a guaranteed fucking teed breaking the fucking law. Like, it, it's not even a question. So it's like he literally did that. Like, he, he hit the, uh, he, he hit the mark that I, I said is the, uh, that, that's the real test. Somebody breaks the law through the platform. Uh, it wasn't only technically, it wasn't technically false, though, because he was used in a video. Um, it is technically false because it was not used in the video. In the, whenever you apply for a copyright strike against somebody, you have to say that you took fair use into context. And he clearly did not do that because all four of the tenets of fair use were met in the video that was being reviewed. So that's not true. So you by by acknowledging that you have to have already you have to have already said that. Like that's something that like you legally uh, abide by. Too more difficult because they're on other platforms like YouTube, no competition. Yeah, I think that's what's that that's what's so problematic about this. Like for example, like it, it, like for example, like people get mad about like, oh, Apex is bad now, Warzone's bad now, who cares? Just go play Warzone or Apex or PUBG, right? You just go play another game. The problem with this is like there's only one one platform for videos, right? It's pretty much YouTube. That's the only thing there. Uh, lack of competition breeds tyranny. You're right about that. You're absolutely right about that. And uh, really place where everything's most organized in the world. But what do I know? No, it is. I, I think there should be better uh, better control over it as well. If YouTube had took an action against them, they need to do it for other big companies that abuse it too, right? Um, well, you'd have to prove that they abused it. And I think that most other big companies probably don't send over false copyright strikes. And also, let's assume that they do send over false copyright strikes. So what is your logic? That if YouTube punishes one person for applying false copyright, that they should punish everybody? Well, yeah, I think that's what should happen. I, I think that filing a false copyright claim is one of the few things that every single content creator on YouTube agrees is a no-no. Like, that, that is, like, one of the only things that, like, the, the far left, far right, video game, makeup tutorial, uh, lifestyle vlog, uh, you know, like family YouTuber, uh, cryptocurrency, uh, like TV repair, all of these groups all agree, do not fucking file strikes unless it is a legitimate thing. Everybody fucking agrees on that. 